Hey everybody, Kurt Othmer back with the 2017 Clinical Summit and I have invited these two amazing experts along with me to talk to you about the combination sensor. This is Roxana Sasu. She's been a clinician with us for nine years Four, now. Four, nine years now. And she is an instructor for us, teaches the assessment and what is it? It's synchrony the now. Synchrony. And, and then also the intro class. Oh, that's right. Yep. That's right. You're yep. half the intro class now. <laughs> oh, how time flies. Oh, yes. And Micah Wiedemann, you do the intro class in Europe. And you are a university instructor. You teach at university and in the advanced class over there. And you also just got off an airplane. And I dragged you into this to help us with the combination sensor. Well, because I really want your voices as we get into not just the technical details of how does this work, but the specifics of, you know, well, sorry, the specifics of how it works, but the more general of how do we interpret the results? What is meaningful here? What is not meaningful? And you know, when does the results differ from, from what we think? And so I kind of want to pick both of your brains on that. But first, just the technical how-to. How do we plug it in? Because this is a little techy. This isn't as simple as some of the other stuff. This it is a little, bit, a little bit techy. Um, so all it takes is for the combination sensor to be plugged into the, the neuro amp. And we need to make sure to plug it into the far yeah. right port. We don't plug it into the other port. It just only goes in the far just right. Just the port. far right. The okay. other three can be used for the tactile. Okay. So then this is designated for the uh, amplifier, for the combination sensor. So Sorry. I can do those at the same time. I can do yes, the you combination can. sensor and the bear. Right. And the bear goes into one of the other ones. Exactly. Nice. Exactly. So let me do that now. Plug it in the flat surface upwards, just like you do it with the tactile. Uh, it doesn't go all the way in, but yeah. far enough. So just. Yeah. Once it's Sometimes it doesn't like click or anything, but it's no. But yeah, it, yeah. It it, you, yeah, you can't go any further than that. Right. That's, that's it. Okay, and then um, what you have to do is enable the um, sensor, mm -hmm. and what you need to do for that is go into the settings yeah. on the main screen and scroll down to combination sensor, mm -hmm. and it will show you that it's disabled. Uh, disabled is checked. Mm -hmm. and then what you need to do is enable it. Once you've done that, there's two more steps that you need to do. Mm -hmm. You need to reset Signet twice, and that's done on purpose. So if you really use the combination sensor, then you go through all those steps once you enable it. If you don't turn the uh, system off and you don't turn uh, the computer off, then it should work for all the subsequent sessions. Okay, so I don't have to do that every session. Every time. Just it's one time, time set up. And we reset twice. Right. And that tells it I really am serious about using the combination right. sensor. It's not just make believe. Yes. I didn't just, it's not a bear. It's actually the combination, the combination sensor. sensor. So enable, reset twice, okay. right plug. I'm learning. Exactly. Okay. And then so we reset once, we'll reset again. Excellent. And Settings, then reset. it will be ready to go. And nice. you can see this red light will pop up here as soon as we start using it. So in the okay. so see right can, panel. See that little light there. And let me, should I put this on? Uh, sure. All right. So let me I'll help let you, you there. I'll let you be the therapist. We'll use the index finger. Mm -hmm. It's. And now I've seen, like Sam in his office, he just has the, the Velcro closed. And then with the Velcro closed, uh, the client can just sort of sneak in there and slide their finger in under the Velcro. Or you can undo it and... So then in the right panel, under graphs, if you click on it, you'll have the measurements. Great. So what am I seeing there? What you're seeing is, well, a few things. Mm -hmm. The uh, amplitude trends, that's something that has nothing to do with the combination sensor. That's our graph in the session report as well, uh, and in the history graph. So that's something that you will know about. The EMG, that's muscle tension picked up actually by the electrodes. So the first two graphs have nothing to do. They don't reflect anything that the combination sensor is picking up. But then the next few so the graphs. E so the EMG, that's actually pulling like from the EEG sensors, and it's telling you this is muscle tension. So it's giving you muscle tension from the EEG Perfect. sensors. That is a cool trick. It is. I like well, that. but think about muscle tension. It's a much bigger signal than the actual EEG. Mm -hmm. So then that's pro probably easier to measure. I love it. I love it. So easy for them to pull that out and put it and there put and it go, just in a graph. by the separately. way, your client has muscle tension. Right, right. There's a graph. And we're getting it from the EEG electrodes. Right. Oh, that's neat. 
And then the next thing we see is the heart rate, and then we have GSR, so that's galvanic skin response, and we have temperature measurements. And uh, then the last piece here is a stress index. So what the software does is it calculates a stress index based on those measurements, telling you whether you're pretty calm or pretty stressed. So it's an overall kind of measurement. And uh, that actually doesn't show anything right now because it needs 120 seconds okay. to get started. I'm going to tighten this a little bit here. Oh, okay. And just, just that to better? be more comfortable. Yes. Mm -hmm. So talk to me a little bit. So heart rate and I see HRV. Right, so that's have... heart rate variability. Okay. <clears throat> so the, and there's a number next mm -hmm. to it. So that's the variability between you know, the, the heart rate when you're breathing in and when you're breathing out. And that should vary, that, that, should, that should be nicely varying. Nice. And uh, so that's another way of measuring how the system responds to certain stressors and stimuli in real life. Mm -hmm. And of course, what we're getting here is uh, basically reflective of how that nervous system responds to what we're doing with, with the training, nice. um, which so is really helpful when the client is not giving you much information or when the client is trying to be nice. <laughs> right. Well, that's a, that is really what I want to delve into, right? I mean, first I'd like to understand these numbers just a little bit better. Mm -hmm. What is heart rate? What is GSR? What is heart rate variability? What is temperature? What does it mean in this stress index? But I really, what I really want to delve into with you guys is how do we underinterpret or overinterpret these numbers? I mean, how do we use the stress index to say, boy, there might be something meaningful here from the client, but how do we also say, wow, there must be something meaningful, and then it's not. Um, well, so first let me delve into the numbers. What is, so heart rate is, this is, what am I, 87? It's a pulse. Okay. Right, pulse, so you, you get the number here, um, and it varies, right? So then you get the heart rate variability, which is the difference between your heart rate that's going up and down with your breathing. Okay. And that's, that difference is, that is reflected in that number. Nice. Okay. And then um, the skin response, the galvanic skin response, that's basically sweating. Which I'm doing more of, being right. on camera. And see, I actually, no, I'm never nervous. Never at all. It's, this is, it's lies. It's <laughs> lies. I don't get nervous on camera. This is not true at all. Um, okay, so my GSR is climbing through the roof as right. we're on camera. And we would expect that to go down if we're calming the nervous system down. Okay. So we're doing the opposite with you right now. Yes. And then, or at least this is what the measurement is saying. This is exposure therapy. <laughs> and then what we also have below is the temperature measurement, mm -hmm. and that goes up because as muscle tension is decreasing, you have increased blood flow to your body, mm -hmm. and then that's being measured, right? The temperature is rising. A nice warm hand. Look at yeah, that. 88 yeah. degrees. Mm -hmm. I must have done a lot of biofeedback in my youth. You must That's, have. <laughs> yeah. You know, my mom tells this story that she did so much hand warming because she didn't like getting on airplanes. Um, and so she did so much hand warming that when she gets on an airplane, her hands, like, just in, like being there. Yeah, just her hands her warm up, response, right? Yeah. Just conditioned yeah. response, oh, yeah, right? She's yeah. done it so many times with hand warming when she gets right. on a plane that, boom, her hands just get hot <laughs> when she gets in an airplane. Just conditioned response. Mm -hmm. So apparently, uh, okay, so my hands are nice and warm, and my stress index is interestingly all over the place. It kind of went up with my GSR there. Right, it did, and then now it goes down. Now, okay. you're moving a lot and you're talking a lot, ah. which with a client training with us wouldn't really happen much. So the talking, sure, but not the moving. Right, the flailing around, standing yeah. on stage, okay, that kind of thing so is messing we're, it So we're up. picking that up, and then, okay. um, you know, if you would be hooked up, we're not getting an EEG signal now, so, you know, we right. don't have the amplitude trend, so we're not really getting the entire information that we would normally collect with a client that's training with us. Got it. Um, and this little green light, that's my heart rate? That's or? your, yeah, that's your pulse. Oh, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. And what is nice about the graphs is that you can adjust them, so you can um, move them up and down, so move the, you know, the baseline kind of. Oh, cool. Uh, up and down, and then you can blow up the information, you know, the signal to okay. make it bigger, make it smaller, whatever works. Nice. Um, and then what you're seeing here is a time, a, a time frame of five minutes. Okay. But then you can actually, at the end of the session, you can see the entire information, so 30 minute recording. Um, you can replay it in replay mode for each client if you collected the data. Um, and it's interesting. 
I, I find it really interesting having this um, additional information with clients. Not that we're going to, I'm, I'm not basing my clinical decisions on that, those measurements, but it's, it's more information about that brain and it's interesting to see how it correlates with what we hear from the client during the session. And how are you using it with, say, alpha, theta, and synchrony? Are you seeing, are you using it there at all? Yes, we do, we do. Um, and it's interesting, again, because it's a different kind of training, so the expectations are different. We're achieving more, maybe more calming with the synchrony training. We're achieving a different, deeper kind of calming with the, with the alpha, theta. But sometimes, for instance, in alpha, theta, people might have a very transformational experience, which doesn't have to necessarily be a good one. And then uh, you'll, you'll see that oh, in, wow. the, in the measurements because, you know, then the heart rate is going to go up. So it's, it's, it's picking up stress, right? Sure. The stress signal from the body. Sure. And that's what we're seeing, right? So if somebody has some really profound experience 20 minutes into their alpha theta session, they're like, oh, and boy. And you'll be able to exactly wow. see that. And just in, that moment in the heart rate and the right. GSR and the temp yeah. and everything just... That's really fine to discuss with clients after the session. Yeah. You know, they always want to see something in the lines, and yeah. they say we yeah. don't see it in the EEG, yeah. but we might see a lot of in this peripheral stuff. Yeah. And then you can see, well, in the middle of the session, we see something here, what happened there, and they say, oh, well, I feel that I had this experience, or I re-experienced, and they are really impressed to see that in the, in the line graphs then. Well, that's also what I really like about the quick test, is that it gives you those numbers that they're craving, that the, the, the clients are craving, to see those numbers in the EEG. And, Doc, am I better? <laughs> Show me my, I'm better in my EEG. And it's like, well, you're better on your quick test. And these graphs are interesting. So I love that that gives you something. And so are you using this? You've, you've been using the combination sensor? Yes, I'm using it with most people that are new in the training. So mm -hmm. when they are not really trained what we are asking them for, so they tend to look at the screen and say, well, how do you feel? Well, the screen is getting darker or brighter or whatever. I say, well, but how do you feel inside? It's hard for a lot of people. So if you have this in the beginning and then you train them over time, it's not that I need it over 30 or 40 sessions using the sensor, but for the first five, six, seven sessions, I always use it, especially with adult people, not necessarily with the kids that move around a lot because then we grab a lot of um, movement okay. artifacts, then it's more difficult to interpret, but also useful. Yeah. yeah. So we get those artifacts. So that's the, that's the uh, sort of over-interpreting of it. We can read too much into it. It's just wiggling. And then right. under-interpreting as well. And so you've been using this. Using yes, this. absolutely. And it's, it's really interesting. I have this one client that comes to mind. He um, was watching documentaries, nature documentaries, which are really beautiful. But every once in a while, you know, an animal gets killed. And during one of those scenes, although he was reporting that he was feeling nice and calm, I could see that he was actually stressed out. So at the end of the session, I asked, was that scene disturbing and he said you know actually it was so, yeah well I could tell <laughs> I love it so that's 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 how you use it that's how you use that piece of information it's just additional information about the nervous system it's not going to be the core it's not going to tell you which frequency of a nervous system needs so not it's not going there what we're hoping for is that this is you know a tool that we can then develop into maybe a biofeedback tool and I think that's, you know, this is just the platform yeah. and the possibilities. We've are got the exciting. sensor. Why not use it with, uh, with biofeedback? Just run the games directly with this and do it for biofeedback. There's also just so many great biofeedback toys out there so people can just, you know, get right. an wave for yeah. a couple hundred yeah. bucks. Yeah, yeah. That's works true. Too. So. Perfect. Thank you both so much for taking the time with me. Thank you, I of really course. appreciate it. This was fun. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you.